okay, Ben? Hey, Jaunty, good to see you again. Yeah, you too. You too. How's it going? Uh, um, uh, you, you wanted to talk about autoimmune disease? Autoimmune disease. Auto, uh, uh, horror autotoxicus, as hmm. it's called. That's when there's a, a really interesting paper that talks about the horror of autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is when the body just doesn't behave itself. Specifically, the immune system doesn't behave itself. The immune system is the body's defense system, right? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to attack the enemy. Enemies get into the body. The, uh, the immune system is like the defense department. I, I equate it with like the, the army, and the AV, uh, army and the Navy and the Air Force of a country. Countries have to have their boundaries protected, and the Army and the Navy and the Air Force protect the boundary. If, a, if an enemy gets into the country, the, the Air Force scrambles all the planes, and the Army gets alerted. And That's kind of like what happens with the immune system. When the bad guys get into the system, when the bad guys get into the body, the immune system attacks an evolutionary appropriate adaptation. The body has a defense department and kills the enemy. However, mm -hmm. with autoimmune diseases, instead of killing the enemy, the body kills itself. So I, what, what's, what's that about? How does the right. immune system, instead of uh, uh, turning its very significant and very important weaponry on bacteria and pathogens and toxins, it turns it on its own cells? What's up with that? Well, clearly, it's a sign that the immune system has been activated inappropriately or that the immune system has been activated uh, in a way that doesn't serve us. If the immune system attacks bacteria and pathogens, that serves us. If the immune system attacks the thyroid, that doesn't serve us. So what's going on here? Well, first of all, you got to know there's about 20 maybe 25 million or so people who suffer from autoimmune diseases. 75% of patients, of autoimmune patients, are women. And there's a very important clue there. I think we talked about that in our last video. Uh, and here's, here's the bottom line. Whenever uh, the immune system is activated inappropriately, the first thing you want to do is you want it to backtrack to where most of the immune system is located. Most of the immune system lives in the gut. Most of the immune system lives in the intestine, which is, makes perfect sense because the intestine is the barrier between the outside world and the inside world. We eat food, food goes down the tube. The tube is actually not technically part of the body in the sense that it is sort of a sequestered uh, hallway and it, uh, food has to get processed and vetted before it can make it into the blood. If you have something that's getting, if you have an, uh, uh, an activated immune system, something has gotten into the body, i.e. the blood inappropriately. It's really as simple as that. So how do things get into the blood inappropriately? Well, the intestinal barrier is a very robust barrier that's supposed to kind of uh, protect or, or allow food to get into the bloodstream, which is on the other side of the immune system barrier, very, uh, very carefully. In other words, food isn't supposed to just enter into the bloodstream. It's got to make it through that barrier in a very controlled fashion. So you, food gets digested in the stomach and broken down in the intestine and then little particles are supposed to just get uh, enter into the bloodstream through the intestinal lining in a very, very careful and a very uh, 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 strictly monitored fashion. It's really kind of interesting how that happens. Literally, food particles will enter into this, this little portal, this, uh, this tube, they call it a lumen, the intestinal lumen, and then it'll contact the cells of the intestinal lumen, and then the cells will pick up those little food particles and flip them over, and they'll enter into the blood. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you got this, this tube, and then the cells of the tube will, will uh, the food will attach to the cells of the tube. The cells will then flip over and put the food into the bloodstream. However, over the course of time, and under uh, when uh, the intestine is, is uh, being subjected to the presence of lots of toxins, wrong food, inflammatory factors, what ends up happening is little holes develop in the intestine, and instead of Foods flipping in, flipping over into the bloodstream through uh, uh, in a controlled fashion through this little cell flip, food leaks into the bloodstream directly, without mm. being vetted, and this creates a major problem. It's called, by the way, leaky gut syndrome. You've probably heard that term. Right. A lot of people yeah. will ask me when they have a health challenge. They'll say, "Oh, you think I have leaky gut syndrome?" I would say, "Of course you have leaky gut syndrome. Anytime you have an inflammatory condition or an immune uh, immune condition." And most diseases, most chronic long-term diseases have an element of inflammation or an element of immunity involved. You have this leaky gut. Why? Because the immune system is not activated until things get into the blood inappropriately. So if, thing, if you have an immune system activation or you have some kind of inflammatory condition going on inside the body, almost 100% of the time it's due to something getting into the blood inappropriately. By the way, vaccines 
which breach the uh, skin barrier and are in a way a kind of version of leaky gut through mm -hmm. the skin mm -hmm. in the sense that things are getting into the bloodstream when they shouldn't be getting into the bloodstream can also trigger immune reactions, can also trigger autoimmunity. There's vaccine autoimmunity. So when you have an autoimmune disease, something has gotten into the blood that shouldn't get into the blood. For the most part, that's going to involve food. And we know this because when people fast, they're in, not only do their autoimmune conditions improve, but also their inflammatory conditions improve. Mm. So first thing you want to do if you have an autoimmune disease, if you want to assess what, or any kind of inflammatory disease really, you want to see for sure, you want to check for sure if there's a food, if there's food involvement or digestive system involvement. The best way to do that is to lay off a food for a day or two. Uh, what will typically happen for most people when you lay off a food for a day or two, your inflammatory system, uh, inflammatory symptoms will subside. Then you start eating again and you pay attention to what, what happens when you eat specific foods. Mm. And we know that when you eat specific foods, if you have an inflammatory condition or you have an autoimmune condition, your symptoms will spike. So then you just keep track of what foods are causing what problem. At the same time, you also want to uh, make sure that you're patching up the gut. You're strengthening the gut. And we said earlier how 75% of autoimmune patients are women. And whenever a disease affects women, like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Alzheimer's disease, or also uh, autoimmunity, whenever a disease affects mostly women, you always want to look for the horm uh, look for something uh, involving the hormone estrogen because estrogen is the quintessential hormone. Well, there is a very important relationship between probiotics, good bacteria, the microbiome, as it's called, and estrogen processing. Mm. So that when estrogen, when the microbiome is not, uh, uh, bacteria are not populating the microbiome inappropriately, the wrong kind of bacteria, or in the uh, or, or in the mic or, or in the intestine, or uh, bacterial overgrowth occurs. Something called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth occur. Estrogen processing will be thrown off. So what you want to do, in addition to eliminating food and then paying attention to the kinds of uh, or fasting, I should say, and then eliminating specific foods, paying attention to what foods cause uh, spikes in your symptomology, and then eliminating those foods, you want to work on how your body processes estrogen. And there's lots of ways to do that. First of all. The microbiome, that is probiotics. Get yourself on a good probiotic supplement. Use fermented foods. Support the health of the microbiome with fiber. Also, apple cider vinegar can help. Anything that you can do to, to improve the environment of the intestine. Vegetable juices can also help. Uh, anything you do to improve the environment of the intestine so it's more hospitable for the right kind of bacteria will help autoimmune diseases. Then you want to start patching up the gut. Uh, things like the Fucoid Z, glucosamine. These are all, uh, the, uh, both of these supplements can help strengthen the connective tissue that lines the gut. Fucoid Z is really uh, has other benefits for autoimmunity in that it makes the immune system stronger and more, uh, more vigorous so that it's not as jumpy. When you have an autoimmune disease, your immune system is jumpy. Fucoid can help strengthen the immune system so it's not as jumpy, and that's in the Fucoid Z. There's another great immune boosting supplement called Beta Glucan which is in the Restart Your Life product from Longevity. That's mm -hmm. also a great immune booster. Uh, vitamin C, of course, that's the quintessential immune system booster. Vitamin E is also helpful. Working on the digestive system, uh, using digestive enzymes, and also the aforementioned apple cider vinegar can help. One of the things that happens when we don't digest our food properly, even uh, if we don't have enough enzymes or if we're not uh, making enough stomach acid, is little particles of food can enter into the intestine, peptides specifically, small little pieces of protein from our foods can enter into the intestine and if there's an inf inflammatory condition in the gut, those can leak into the bloodstream and those are major triggers of the immune system. So making sure your, your food is being broken down appropriately using digestive enzymes and apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar can also help. Bile salts are also important. You'll find bile salts in the ultimate enzymes. That's a good supplement. Bile salts are especially helpful for helping the body process estrogen. Anything you could do to protect the gallbladder and the liver will help the body process estrogen. So things like alpha lipoic acid, essential fatty acids, these are all very important for uh, for liver, uh, both very important for liver health. Also, lecithin granules can be helpful for the gallbladder. All of these will help the body process estrogen and also help the body process food. So work on the gut. Work on how your body processes estrogen. Eliminate problem foods, and almost always you'll notice that your autoimmune symptoms begin to subside. Autoimmunity needs to be regarded as a sign that something has been has entered into the bloodstream inappropriately. For the most part, things that are entering into the bloodstream inappropriately involve a leaky gut and an unhealthy digestive system. Is, is there a role that psychology plays at all with the... Uh... 
absolutely, absolutely. Cortisol, uh, stress, uh, psychological stress will elevate stress hormone, cortisol, and that will not only uh, affect the digestive system, it will slow down digestive, uh, digestive system processing, but it will also uh, increase, uh, it will slow down the ability of the gut to heal from inflammatory conditions. So uh, cortisol and all stress hormones, which can be related not just to psychological stress, to physiologic stress, will slow down healing and can, can exacerbate all inflammatory mm. or all uh, uh, immune activation, immune conditions, immune activated conditions. Although interestingly, cortisol is an immune suppressant. In fact, the major drugs that they give you are uh, anti-cortisol drugs or anti-inflammatory drugs when you have an immune condition. That alone tells you uh, that mm. the inflammatory system plays a major role in these health challenges because right. the major drug, the most important pharmacological therapy or most important a pharmacological intervention for these conditions is anti-inflammatories. Mm -hmm. Cortisol is a great anti-inflammatory in the short term, but in the long term, it will slow down healing and thin connective tissue, and that can exacerbate problems with leaky gut and will also interfere with digestive system processing. I should also tell you that when you have an estrogenic condition, as an autoimmune disease, as autoimmune diseases likely do, uh, having regular bowel movements is very important because estrogen is cleared out of the bowels. Mm. So anything you can do to improve your bowel, uh, bowel, uh, bowel, movement, uh, bowel movements, I should say, things like more fiber and probiotics, as we just said, will help. Cortisol will have a negative effect on that. Cortisol slows down the digestive system and will slow down elimination. So if you're chronically constipated and you have autoimmune diseases, things like uh, making sure that you have regular bowel movements by using things like fiber and the probiotics can also be important. important. And making sure you're drinking a lot of water is also important. Uh, mm. Half a gallon, a quart to half a gallon of water every day, even up to a gallon every day to keep yourself regular. Mm, okay. Uh, ben, uh, you mentioned fiber, and, and I'm always, I'm, I'm curious what uh, sources of fiber you'd recommend. A lot of the things that people commonly associate with fiber are also some of the, uh, the foods that tend to be problem foods. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but fiber, vegetables are your best source of fiber. Okay. Vegetables vegetable juices and fermented vegetables give you uh, fermented vegetable fermented vegetables give you three mechanisms for improving bowel health number one the ferment uh, the bacteria in the fermented vegetables will improve the health of the microbiome the, the universe of bacteria that lives in the gut number two there's nitrogen in fermented vegetables vegetables being a good source of nitrogen and nitrogen is very important for the uh, bacteria that live in the gut and number three you have the uh uh, the uh, a fiber in the vegetables. So doing vegetable juices and doing fermented vegetables are a great way to get your fiber. If you do them fermented, mm. you'll get the bacteria you'll get in addition to the nitrogen and the fiber. And then my favorite way, and this is what I do to get my fiber, is I get uh, flax seeds and chia seeds and I grind them up in a coffee grinder and I put them in my smoothie every day, like a tablespoon to two tablespoons every day. Now, you gotta be careful when you do it that way because that's a big dose of fiber mm. and you can get a little bit gassy if you start off with too much fiber. So you want to kind of uh, adjust the dose gradually. Find a nice sweet spot for you. I do, personally, I do it between one, one tablespoon and two tablespoons full of fiber, uh, full of either flax seeds or chia seeds or a combination of both. But you'll have to see where that is for you. Start off with like maybe one teaspoonful. Mm. Great. Well, uh, um, it, it's, you know, it, it tends to be that uh, all of these things go back to the uh, the digestive system and, and, and the gut and whatnot. You know, it's so important because I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm a foodie because mm. I'm not. You know, people I think people should eat whatever they want to eat, but recognize that there's a price to pay mm. for the foods that we eat. And if you're sick, it doesn't mean that you have to go on a starvation diet. It just means that they, you have options to drugs which don't work anyway. Mm. The drugs only mask the symptoms, and even worse, they allow you to keep doing the bad habits and keep doing the, the bad things that cause you to, that cause the problems in the first place. And then you'll never really get better. So it's not like you know, good foods, bad foods, eat organic. You know, only eat your vegetables. Don't eat sugar. Don't eat desserts. Don't eat bread. It's not. It's not. That's not what it's about. What it's about is you have options. You have choices. And you have choices that don't involve the medical model. You have choices that you can employ from the comfort of your own kitchen. So you don't have to be super strict about anything. Just see what foods are triggering problems and know that if you eat certain foods, your autoimmune symptoms are likely to spike. Know that if you have a problem with your digestive system, if you eat certain foods, you're going to mess it up even worse. So you don't have to necessarily go on a starvation diet, but just recognize that there is a connection here. It's not like there's, it's not like, an angel sprinkled autoimmune dust on your head and all of a sudden you have autoimmune disease. Mm. It's like 
something we're doing in our lives is causing us distress. And if you want to change that distress, change what you're doing in your life. For, for longevity, for health issues, cancer, autoimmune disease, skin problems, always fast for a day or two or do a swear OB cleanse. A swear OB cleanse is where you do a half a bottle of swear OB every hour for two or three days. If you can't fast, a swear OB gives you fermented, uh, some fermented protein and also, uh, also uh, some electrolytes. So it makes it easier to go into a fast. When you're done with your fast, you're done with your swear OB cleanse, eat one kind of food all day or eat one kind of food half a, for, the, uh, for half a day and pick your favorite foods and write down how your body responds to that food. Keep a food diary. And when I say keep a food diary, I mean write down the food you eat and then take notes, chart, just like you're writing a diary. Your, all of your, your responses, how your, body, how your body feels, how you feel, are you tired? Do you have psychological things going on? Do, you, uh, do your joints hurt? Do you have inflammatory problems? Is your, is your skin getting worse? And connect those up to specific foods. Don't, don't try to use your memory just write things down, and at the end of three or four days of writing down everything you eat, you're going to be blown away by what you find out. It's going to be things like, you know, oh my gosh, every time I have corn, I bloat, or every time I have bread, I have belly ache, a belly ache, or every time I have peas, my skin breaks out, or every time I have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I get brain fog. And so you'll start to notice these things, and this is true for all health conditions, but especially if you have an immune system problem, and it's only common sense because the immune system is largely located in the gut. Some 80% of the immune system is located in the gut. So it just makes perfect sense that if you have an immune problem, almost by definition, you have a gut and food problem.